All right, welcome back to Fleck and Socks, the podcast, episode 90. Today on the show, is Margot Robbie really mid? Some people think so. We'll discuss and we'll also cover some of the anti-incel commentary coming from the right wing. Then after that, ring cameras are being accused of being racist because they record certain groups committing a disproportionate amount of crimes. We'll get into that. Then the fantasies of the deranged continue. This trans thing thinks he's getting a uterus so he can get pregnant and an abortion. We'll talk about that. And last but not least, people need to stop taking these fake candid photos and pretending they're really laughing. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 90, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fluck the Stocks Podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by Fume. If you're like me, you have a couple bad habits that you're trying to get rid of. And cold turkey may be good on sandwiches, but is not always the best way to accomplish that goal. There is a better way to break your bad habits, and that is Fume. The way Fume sees it, not everything in a bad habit is necessarily bad. You don't need to make drastic, uncomfortable, unsustainable changes. All you really need to do is remove bad from your habit. And that's what the award-winning innovative product Fume does for you. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural delicious flavors. So if you have the urge to do something like a hand-to-mouth thing that you've been doing for years, instead, you pick up your Fume, breathe in that fresh flavored air, tastes good, feels good, So instead of continuing your bad habits, pick up a fume and replace those bad habits with something good, easy, and natural and delicious like this. Tryfume.com slash Fleckus is the website. T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash Fleckus. Use code Fleckus for 10% off store wide. We all have things we need to kick, and I think fume is a great way to do it. Thank you for sponsoring. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to our new sponsor. Yeah, thank you. It's always good to break bad habits. Yeah. And however you can do it, you should. All right, we'll get into some action. We have a really important housekeeping this week. I'm not just saying that. We have three, I'm going to say three and a half pages of housekeeping. Oh, gosh. And it gets him upset. He doesn't like knowing that. No, I'm not upset. I'll I'll let him cook. I'll let him cook. Let me cook a little bit. All right, really quick. We're going to get through the doppels because we don't even do doppels anymore. It's just a two-second thing that we do in the beginning of the show. Um, in case we still did. Lieutenant Dan, and was it Gary Sinise? Yeah. It looks like me. The guy with him. Yeah, Lieutenant yeah. Dan. Yeah. So it looks like me. Yeah. And then there's a new Maybelline ad now where it's basically like Bizarro World Fleckus. If I had really taken a different route. Yeah. If I had drank a lot of the atrazine. Mm. Look at that. I got my blush. I got uh-huh. my bald head. I got the glam makeup on. You could have been a Maybelline partner. You got the nails. Oh, yeah. I have a better beard than that individual as well. Yep. Yep. All right. That's it. No doppels for you? No, nothing. Lucky. You're, that's your job. Yeah. I don't bring them for myself. Actually, they say there's a weatherman or a Twitter weatherman who looks like me. You'll see him next week, probably. All right. We'll cover that on Tuesday. Very important. Mark your calendars. So there's a weatherman who looks like Richard. We'll, yeah, we'll get Three there. pages? <laughs> All right, we have uh, actual news to get to in housekeeping, which we do now as well. Zelensky got humiliated at the NATO summit. What was it? Yeah, uh, NATO basically said, nah, we don't want to date you, Zelensky. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the uh, 1975 weapons we dump on your country, but you're not going to get the collective defense agreement. So here he is, manlet, sitting off to the side. Yep, he's in his little costume. Yeah. He's got his little war costume on, his size nine combat boots. Maybe even size eight, if we're being Size honest. eight combat boots. Yeah. It's, like, it's almost like an oxymoron. Yeah. It's like size eight combat, combat boots. <laughs> it's like, why would you need a size eight person <laughs> yeah. in combat? Yeah, ship them to China. <laughs> um, exactly. And then that whole thing, it really is a costume. I looked up some old pictures. Zelensky used to wear suits all the time. Of course. He used to be a suit guy. This is his wartime fit. This is his know? wartime fit. He's LARPing just as much as anybody. Like, yeah, you know? of course. And it's crazy that he didn't see this coming because 
here on the show since day one, we knew he was getting played and he didn't know that. Yeah. So it's like this stupid podcast is smarter than Zelensky. Yeah. And that, that counts. And there's a lot of Ukrainians dead. Yeah. You know, because of this kind of, you know, funding with American weapons. Go, hey, go, go right into the Russia, the line of fire. Fight for this piece of land. So I don't know. Not good. Yeah, not good. A lot of Ukrainians dead. A lot of people that probably would have stopped the corruption eventually are probably dead now. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you know what? The other thing is, like, we talked about Lindsey Graham on Tuesday with his tweet. I'm going to do everything yeah. in my power to get Ukraine to join NATO. And it's like. Even the Biden administration did the right thing politically. Yeah. You know, and even so the like, Biden administration said no. And then it's like, Lindsey Graham, what the fuck were you doing? What the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> what were you trying to sneak in? Yeah. So that's bad. Uh, I'm glad it's de uh, escalating, I guess, now that they're not in NATO. NATO would be obviously automatic World War Three. Yeah. Huge escalation. It's, so. it's not necessarily de escalating, but it's not super escalating. Exactly. All right, moving on. We also have to remind everybody, we had a Tuesday episode this week. We had our first Tuesday episode on Tuesday. It went <laughs> It went very well. Everyone loved it. The numbers are similar to normal podcast uh, episodes, actually towards the top performance-wise. So people are around. People are tuning in on Tuesdays as well. So make sure you guys put your notifications on. So on Tuesday and Friday, you get the show. Also, let's take this opportunity to juice the algo. Let's like this post, comment, like, notifications on. Notifications is a big one, I think. That's a big one. Especially for Tuesday. And what I'm learning is a lot of you people are watching Tuesday. You're just watching at work. You just fuck off for an hour. Oh, yeah, Friday. Summer Fridays. That's chill. What about Tuesday at 2? Yeah. Why are you watching an hour fat fuck podcast? I respect it. Keep doing it. (laughs) We need that. Also, I've never told people to do notifications. Yeah. I never reminded. Like, I never just like, I never, I never thought to do that. And that's probably the most important call to action as a creator. I, well, for a show like us, too, who doesn't get show up in the next or the recommended mm-hmm. or anything, turn on those noties. It's called Dumb Guy Move. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, cool. Moving on. We have a lot of good show shout outs that came to me this week. This one guy was working on a job site. And they wrote Fluckus Talks Best New Podcast of All Time on the wood, which yeah. is huge. And then it gets put into someone's house. Yeah, I think it's going to be under the deck or something, maybe the front porch. So that's going to live forever. Yep. That's that's actually good. It's like a reverse curse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. And then um, we have this guy who was on a motorcycle or some sort of mini bike who went over to a tennis court and then shouted out the show. Check this out. Hey, I just want you all to know that Fleckus Talks is the hottest new podcast show of all time. And, and, Rob Smith had ceviche at the cabana <laughs> after tennis. After tennis. Hold on, I want to wait till this part. <laughs> and he starts laughing. And, he's and laughing. he rides off. He rides off and you see the shadow. You see the shadow of the bike. Hey, we can relate to that. Yeah. We're bikers ourselves. That's a good one. Just- That's a good one terrorizing a tennis court with random <laughs> schizo stuff. And then imagine you're playing tennis and it's like, what do you say? And it's like, <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> like, yeah. I truly have no idea. Um, and then last but not least, the rock pile knockover. Like this talks, the podcast is the best new podcast of all time. So I have a duty to uphold. Shouts out the podcast. Bam. Knocks it over. That's great. Thank you guys for sending it in. Please keep sending them. We really like them. It goes a long way. It gives us squirts, makes my brain go ding, ding, ding. It makes me laugh. Yep. Keeps me uh, mentally healthy, too. Mm -hmm. If I don't get stuff like this, I spiral bad. (laughs) All right. Let's move on. Uh, The other day, I had something happen, like a nostalgic moment. It was kind of like deja vu. I ate uh, green grapes. You know green grapes? Yeah, of course. Grapes. Yeah. The staple fruit. (laughs) I ate green grapes, like hard, like sour, ripe green grapes. And it uh, it reminded me of like being a kid. And like I had like a flashback basically to like a summer day as like a six year old. Is this you kind of like discreetly admitting that you haven't had grapes in 15 years or something? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> right. Grapes are nostalgia, the everyday grocery store item. <laughs> So you've been exposed. Yeah. All right, I haven't I haven't eaten grapes in twenty years. <laughs> All right, maybe that there's something there. All right, but don't my mom will get upset. She watches the show. Okay, I eat plenty of vegetables and fruit. 
I have I been doing the red and green shakes? <laughs> Not that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know but, you bought it. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> seen it. Well, I've done a couple. I just don't do it every day. Um, okay, let's get on to some real stuff. We have a real important things to get to. The Barbie movie. Yeah. Everyone's talking about the Barbie movie. Um, we've kind of here on the show uh, for the main take for the Barbie movie. We've outsourced our take to this woman. I think her name is Barb. Hey, this is Brooke. And I'm just wondering, what's with all this Barbie crap that I'm getting on my For You page today? And all these stars on is Barbie crap. Barbie is a doll, not a movement. Is this what the liberals want us to be now? Barbie dolls? Um, I think I'm a little old for that. <laughs> that's pretty much that's about my take. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much sums, she it, sums up. it up. <laughs> is this what the liberals want us to be? Barbie dolls? It's like, <laughs> what more can I add? I don't know if that was what they were trying to do. Um, but yeah, people are saying that Margot Robbie's mid, and everyone's getting up. All the girls are getting upset because Margot Robbie's hotter than them, and if that makes her mid, then they're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> And then um, girls are getting very, very mad. They're getting upset. Uh, and obviously, Margo- can't, can't let it go. Can't just let it roll off and be like, oh, he's trolling. That yeah. guy's trolling. That guy's looking for a rise out of me. Exactly. They don't see it that way. They just go, what? <laughs> they get a rise. They rise up. Um, so obviously, Margot Robbie is beautiful. She has been for a long time. She's a very good looking woman. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. And anyone who's not saying that is trolling. Yeah. You're just trying to get people to get mad. You can actually change the algorithm on Twitter for a whole 24 hours just by saying Margot Robbie is mid. Yeah. It's shocking, guys. You won't believe it. Exactly. And a lot of the girls on the right wing especially are saying, the people saying Margot Robbie's mid, they're just incels. They don't get laid. They're porn brains. They're porn brain incels. And it's interesting that the right wing is making fun of people for being incels. It's like, oh, you're not getting laid enough. You're not participating in hookup culture, loser. Yeah, you're not pumping, dumping hotties. <laughs> yeah, you know. And it's in the. It's like exactly. It's like, oh, you you can't you can't chug vodka the fastest. What are you a loser? <laughs> you can't chug a whole bottle right <laughs> what, now. What are we like? Is that good to get yeah. a binge drink like that? Yeah. So I think a big problem is everyone's saying that incels are losers because it would be good to be participating in hookup culture and having casual sex. When in reality, all an incel, someone who's like not hooking up with girls, all they need is one girl. Yeah. And they're set for life. They find a nice wife that likes them and they like them. Bam. They're set for life. There's a lot of girls that participate in hookup culture that later regret it. Mm -hmm. To go, you're an incel. You can't get laid. I'm getting laid all the time by some guys who's not going to marry me. Yeah. And I drink wine every night. And then, uh, oh, shit, I'm 32. Yeah, exactly. So they make fun of these guys, but it's like you're making fun of them for participating in something that we don't condone and shouldn't condone, and that that's not good for society. Yeah. It's a very short-sighted thing, and it's like who's going to have the last laugh? The incel who's not getting laid that much or the girl who's having casual sex but then doesn't get married that much? Yeah, and then also I will say that um, most of the women who I've seen calling someone an incel or doing uh, like, oh, you can't get laid, blah, 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 post pictures of yourself. It's like the women cannot relate to how hard it is being like an average or ugly man. They have yeah. no clue how different the realities are for a woman who's like standard who can basically go any bar, any random place and get taken home, you know? Oh, yeah. A girl who looks normal can have sex any night of the week they want. Literally like this, one random day if they want to. Um, So I don't know. It's just it's like two ships passing in the night. And then uh, women also like, you know, guys, women have their own opinions that men have no idea about, too. So it's like, you know, it's just a weird uh, social conversation where, hey, Women, you got really mad at the Marco Robbie is mid thing. Yeah. Maybe just let that slide next time. It doesn't need to be extrapolated into a whole societal issue. Exactly. You get mad, you call everyone an incel, and then, you know, you kind of open yourself up to getting not the last laugh when the incel finds a wife and he goes, Oh, yeah, you called me an incel. You've had 20 boyfriends in 10 years. Congrats. You have no husband. Yeah. You know? All right. Is that all we need to talk about for that? Yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. Um, on a more serious note, uh, Margot Robbie, obviously very popular. Margot Robbie, you can't spell Margot Robbie without Robbie. Robbie. 
Rob, a.k.a. Rob Smith, a.k.a. Ceviche Tennis Cabana Miami, a.k.a. Vespa Miami Beach Business Meeting Downpour, a.k.a. <laughs> Torrential. Broccoli Rob. Yep. We got some Broccoli Rob submissions. Thank you guys for sending them in. This, like, it keeps me sane. Yeah. It keeps me grounded. Yeah. It gives me squirts, and then that's so good for me because if I was trying to be happy and satisfied with other things in my life that were harder to achieve... I would have mental health problems. Yeah. You know? So you're saving his life. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to be happy till the podcast gets a million views. And it's like, I'm not going to be happy for years. Yeah. But if I'm happy when someone sends me a Broccoli Rob picture, I'm happy right now. It's called low threshold for happiness. It's called instant gratification. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So this is the Broccoli Rob that won. Here's all the submissions. The one that won is the uh, kind of like a colored pencil drawing. Yeah. Um, That was sent in by someone named Hannah, who's a digital arts creator. Uh, I got that framed, and that's coming to my house this week. That will be on my wall. Thank you, guys. I'll probably send you some merch. Merch right now is shut down. Uh, We're getting a new fulfiller, so don't order any merch right now. And if you ordered merch in the last week or so or the last 10 days, it's going to be a while. It'll be like a couple. It'll be another week or so until we get it figured out. That's just what happened. So, all right. Moving on. I kind of have a confession to make to the audience. Um, This is just something I'm going to tell everyone. I And it's like one of those things I'd want you to tell me too. Okay. So I like La La Land. The movie with that Ryan movie Gosling. movie with Ryan Gosling. I really like La La Land. Musical. And I'm going to be straight up with you. I want you to tell me if you like La La Land too, because we could talk about it. Um, but I really do like La La Land. And I was thinking about it. You know how Gosling is like the meme Chad? Yeah. He's like online, social media. There's always memes of him in Drive or what's the other one? With the uh, nose broken. Place Beyond the Pines. Place Beyond the Pines. He's a meme. And I was thinking... Sigma male. Sigma male meme. Like, that's what they like. Gosling is the meme. And it's not real Gosling. It's just Gosling in the movie. Of course. Gosling in the leather jacket driving the car fast with the gun. That's the meme. But we give it like it's so we, like, we give the meme to Gosling pretending to be someone else. And like, that's our alpha Chad like meme, right? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking in the future, what if they look back and rewrite history and they're like, oh, yeah, like, Democrats were very popular. Joe Biden got elected. Ryan Gosling was one of the most famous people. He's you know, a climate change advocate, voted for Joe Biden. And even the right wing revered him as like a Chad Alpha. Like yeah. You can like almost rewrite history and not explain the context of like the fake person Gosling was pretending to be because he could be a liberal freak for all we know. Yeah. And it's very hard to <laughs> des- describe like meta irony on a historical level. Like you can't yeah. go, oh, it was ironic and blah, blah, blah. So it's very hard. You're like, for some reason, their culture valued Ryan Gosling like here. Yeah. So even the people who were staunch Trump supporters, <laughs> yeah. they still were posting Gosling, who was, <laughs> you know, so they could kind of rewrite history. And it makes you think, what else did they lie about? Franz Ferdinand, Great Wall of China, uh, <laughs> Beatles. Yeah. Beatles you know? were fake. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. Did you? Page down. Great Wall of China. I heard it. Yeah. I, oh, I heard it. What do you want? You would need my commentary on I just, that? I was making sure everyone noticed. Yeah. That's my kind of bit. Yeah. All right. We have to get more serious because we have only a page basically and a half of housekeeping left. Okay. This next thing is I'm going to kind of test your memory. Don't look. Okay. Did you see anything? I started reading. I started so, okay. reading. Do you remember an important event from a few months ago around Christmas time? We were told we wouldn't forget. Did you forget? Important event around Christmas time. Around Christmas time. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. The Lexus December to Remember sales event. Mm -hmm. We were told to remember, and it doesn't sound like you did. (laughs) I got a lot of housekeeping today. I'm fading. I'm fading. (laughs) All right, we have one more page. That was a funny thing, though, because it's Lexus sales, Lexus December to Remember, and it's like no one's ever talking about it except for December. I'm a Honda Days guy. I'm a happy Honda Days guy. I'm a Toyota Thon dude. All right, let's move on. BLTs are the sandwich of summer. Everyone agrees with that. Arnie Palmer's are the drink of summer. Everyone agrees with that. We're getting tons of people putting them on their stories and tagging the show. Thank you. Keep doing that. Uh, the candy of summer, nerd clusters. Yeah, we already kind of We've already kind that. of established that nerd we're a nerd. Gummy clusters. Yeah, nerd gummy clusters. We're a nerd gummy clusters family here on the show. They're fantastic. Obviously, you don't want to eat them too much or else you're going to have to you know, break your bad habits with fume. Um, but yeah, they're great. 
It's the candy of summer. We also have the song of summer, which I am not going to play on the show because they might copyright us and ruin the episode, even though we're friends with them. Yeah. We're trying to be like allies. They don't know us personally or are not political. Um, but the song of summer is Bad Dream Baby by September 87. It is linked in the description. Their YouTube video. This is not an ad. It's just a song that Richard Rapboy and I have been playing on repeat because I keep playing it on repeat, and he sits next to me downstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then a- eventually I go, "What is that song called?" Because I need to listen to it on my own. And then I go, oh. and all of a sudden a whirlwind happens, and it becomes "Song of the Summer." So here we are. That is linked. So it's linked below. It's a thing we play on repeat. It's very good. Highly recommend. All right, moving on. We have some summer fails already. People are jumping off of stuff they should not be jumping off of. We discuss this, I think, every year around summertime. Yeah. The first one's the stage dive fail. <laughs> Elevated platform. Boom. Everybody got out of his way. He's totally wrecked. Never had a chance. Never had a chance. And then that dive was such like a <laughs> mean dive, too. Yeah. That he like, could he could have broken his neck and literally died. So Yeah, that's like the dive you do out of a building like before it explodes in a 90s movie. Mm-hmm. But there's a whole big like waterbed thing that you land yeah. on. Um the, the airbag thing. So, I know not many viewers of the show are going to get a stage dive opportunity, but you really need to be able to eyeball the density of that crowd and yeah. figure out Basically, if you're doing a stage dive, the crowd can't be able to get out of the way. Yeah. They have to be like, okay, our only option is catch him. Um, so huge miscalculation by that guy, and he's paying the price. And I recommend the stage dives that are more of like a scuba exit from the from a boat where you kind of just have your mic, and then you just like – and you lean onto the crowd and then just get brought out. Yeah. That running jump. WWE style is No one wants wish. to catch that. Yeah. And I'm just giving advice for you guys. I will never stage dive. Obvious reasons. As a heavier guy, as you're getting carried around, I'm going to go back to the crowd because I don't want people touching my privates. Mm -hmm. And then they're holding me up. I'm heavy. There's going to be people doing most of the lifting. And then their hand is going to go in my butt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm never going to stage dive. It's not what I'm here for. Makes sense. Second jumping fail of the summer, the lake bounce launch guy. Yeah, this guy's on, like, the blob, basically. (laughs) And everyone knows how to do... You should do the stage dive dump from the last one on this. But this guy goes straight legs down. (laughs) Knees bent. He just completely wrecks himself. Feet first. And he's hurt. He's hurt bad. You land straight leg like that, you're hurt. Tear both your hamstrings. You know how they have, like, the, the saying, he's got shoulder issues? He's really hurt. He, like, did probably dislocate everything. He probably... He should have blown his knees out. Yeah. But you know they have this saying for like working out, like suffer now or suffer later. Like suffer now in the gym or suffer later when you're 400 pounds. Yeah. It's kind of the same for touching your toes. It's like suffer now and stretch every day a little bit till you can touch your toes or suffer later and touch your toes all at once in a snap <laughs> fold. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Agreed, agreed. So that's it. All right, moving on. Our friend Rohit is over 1,100 days of having no fizzy drinks. I follow him on Instagram. Every day he posts an update on whether he had a fizzy drink or not. He's trying to quit, and he hasn't had one in a long time. Hello, everyone. No fizzy drink for me today. When I was addicted a few years ago, I used to have fizzy drinks. Any excuse, any occasion. But one special occasion when I used to have fizzy drink all the time is when I used to eat something spicy. Say, for example, spicy Indian biryani. I definitely used to have a can of fizzy drink or a bottle of fizzy drink with that. Now, today, I was sleeping in the afternoon. I woke up just now, a few minutes later, a few minutes earlier, and then I came and I saw in the kitchen there was a plate of fried rice, which my wife has finished, and sitting next to it was a can of fizzy drink. And that straight away brings <laughs> brought back old memories for me when I used to have a fizzy drink with something spicy. Of course, this won't tempt me now, but old memories came back. I thought I'll share this with you guys. And straight away, I thought all those times when I used to have so many fizzy drinks whenever I used to eat something <laughs> spicy. Just, all right. All right. You didn't have a fizzy drink. Daily <laughs> diary. Jeez. Four, give, me, give me 600 <laughs> words on why you haven't had a fizzy drink today. It's like a, it's a homework assignment. No fizzy drink for me today. Good for Rohit. Hey, Rohit, shout out to you. Congrats. You broke the bad habit. That's what's up. Yeah. Hopefully this can inspire other people to not drink fizzy drinks either. 
Okay, last piece of housekeeping. Um, we have a sad update, kind of. Probably the saddest thing I've ever told you guys. The street sweeper in Oregon City for Snarf Snarf O'Banion. Remember, name the street sweeper? Yeah. They picked a name that wasn't Snarf Snarf. They picked Street Sweepio. Yeah, C Sweepio is it. And here's the face of the winner, this little girl with her mom. She likes Star Wars. She won fair and square. She beat yeah, us. I guess. And they wrote an article, and they didn't even mention that the that Snarf Snarf had 400 submissions. They didn't even bring that up. <laughs> well, this was the, uh, the Snarf Snarf definitely had the most Instagram comments, but. We definitely had the most in-person comments, too. But they just weren't going for volume. Okay. They were going for, like, best idea. Because uh, okay. we had tons of people sending things in in person, handwriting them, okay. too. Okay. So don't get too down about that. I feel like we lost the game or something, and I'm like talking to people after the game yeah. on like Monday morning. Keep your like, heads Ugh. up. You fought, you yeah. fought hard out it's there. It's a long season. We'll get our Ws. Yeah. This doesn't define us. We have to get back to work right now with the Name the Cheetahs contest. And, hey, when people don't know about naming contests and they go, oh, yeah, leave a comment and we'll pick the best comment, that's where we – that's where we take advantage. That's, that's where, where we excel. That's where we excel. That's our bread and butter. We are the the kings of sending 400 people to write Snarf Snarf O'Banion on someone's Instagram post. So linked in the description is the Lincoln Children's Zoo. And the they have Lincoln two Ch female cheetah cubs. Our newest zoo residents have yet to be given names. That's where you all come in. So yep. uh, what are we going with? Snarf Snarf? Snarf Snarf. And I think like a nice like, copy for the comments should be I don't know about the other one, but one of them should be called Snarf Snarf. Yeah. Let's be conservative. We're going for one. We're going for one. We don't want need both, but one of them needs to be named Snarf Snarf, all right? So I don't know about the other one, but one of them should be called Snarf Snarf. Yeah. That's what we just do that times a thousand, and we will win, and we will get a Snarf Snarf cheetah, and then what? We have to take care of a cheetah? Yeah. We have to adopt it. <laughs> it comes <laughs> home with us. It lives in here with us and Jerry. All right, moving on. We are out of housekeeping, and we're into Cringe of the Week. All right, Cringe of the Week. Our first clip is the Tourette's Lady Uber driver. Yeah, this kind of coincides with the Kamala Harris thing that we were discussing on Tuesday. So let's see what an Uber driver with Tourette's is like. Yeah, front. Okay. Yeah. Seat. You okay with sitting up front? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay. Good. I'm good. So, my name is Gina. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have Tourette. Yeah! And, <laughs> and my chicks are a little bad today. Uh -huh. <laughs> your name is Sean. Sean Bond! Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to start laughing. How's your day going today, Sean? Fine. Well, that's fine. Right. Right. <laughs> I do know how to drive good, okay? He like, Mom, jumps out of his seat. Some days my ticks are worse than others, you know. <laughs> I got I to get you again. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I'm so glad. I got to get you oh, again. Some people don't really know how to react to my stress. <laughs> She's so old. So I just so want to really appreciate you just being so nice. No, I just want to say that you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm about okay. to get you again. Okay. Okay. He was nice. It was all fun. <laughs> but just like while you're driving on the highway, ah! <laughs> yelling. Why would go... you tell him get in the front seat if you yeah. go? <laughs> <laughs> you're jumping at him. That oh. is not that. Hopefully he didn't smoke the weed pen before that trip. Yeah. Oh, man. And it's like I was wondering, I was like, what kind of jobs would be better for a person with Tourette's? So I have a kind of a list, but I didn't really think of it. A okay. logger, a logger. Yeah, somewhere far out, rural, yeah. just deep in the woods. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And just like yelling and you can't really hear anything. Yep. Working in a national park would yeah. be good. Yeah, there's a uh, risk of forest fire today. <laughs> and and it's like, oh, that person takes their job pretty seriously. Yeah. You don't run into very many people. You know, mm -hmm. you're kind of out. Or anything underwater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They Sounds, can't yell. You they can't can. really do too much. <laughs> underwater welder. Yeah. There you go. And then a bad job for them would be Uber driver, a nanny. You scare the fuck out of a baby. Yeah. That would be actually bad. Anything in a library. And then a flight attendant, like, crash, crash, <laughs> going down. Like, sorry, everything's fine. <laughs> oh. We're going to die. Everyone's oh. going to be okay. I wonder if a Tourette's person 
scared a baby really bad with Tourette's that it would give the baby Tourette's. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're onto something there, but unfortunately, I don't think I can answer that. Oh, yeah, it just works with gay guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Chain migration. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, unskilled labor is a capitalist myth. This was like a tweet going around. So that's what all the people like to oh. say. All the socialists and communists, they like to say unskilled labor is a capitalist myth. While like this guy just was like your job's to put the things in the bucket. He's the thingamabobber flicker guy. Like you could do it any way. And just because it looks cool, it's like now you're a skilled labor. Your job is to put the lollipops in the bucket. Yeah, you you have a symbiotic relationship with the factory line. Yeah. And you do it. You did it kind of cool. So now you're very skilled. Yeah, you're skilled labor. My thing is, if you aren't doing some sort of flicky thing by day three, then you're just an idiot. Yeah. You know, if you haven't like explored like, oh, this works really well. Like, yeah. you, you can get it by day three. Yeah. And three might be slow. You yeah. should be experimenting right away is my For point. sure. But this is a big thing, a big meme that kind of happens. Box machine, brown person, cool flip. Box pile. That's it. And that's it. Unskilled labor is a myth, they say, (laughs) after this. All right. Moving on. The Amazon delivery guy is scared of the dog. Let's let it rip. Holy fuck. Amazon guy. He delivers the package. What does he see? A dog. And they're like in like a rural suburb, like not even a suburb, like. Dog's wagging his tail, wondering what's going on. And this guy's just scared, completely standing up. And then look at this, the lab. A lab comes. No. It's like the nicest lab you've ever seen. And that realistically, this guy's probably used to dogs with bad behavior who have bad owners. Yeah. I will climb this shit. It's like a lab looking at you. <laughs> wait, wagging Golden his retriever. T- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wagging his tail. Imagine he starts kicking the dog or doing that. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy's probably used to bad dogs. Dude, the Tourette's driver, being an Uber driver with Tourette's, this guy, a delivery guy who's deathly afraid of dogs, any and all dogs. Yeah. These people need like a resumebuilder.com thing that suits them with things that fit their preferences. That's crazy. Or like an ayahuasca trip or something. Yeah, <laughs> to reset know. their brain. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that lab looks pretty friendly, buddy. Yeah. Um, but here's an actual dog attack, and here's what a real dog attack looks like. This, do- this dog attacked a kid, bit a kid, and everyone's trying to get it off. And everyone's probably in the comments going to say, oh, that's not a pit bull. Yeah, it is. Any dog that attacks a person, pit bull. That's how I categorize it. It's actually pretty simple. And then there is a situation where this could happen in people's lives. Like, this, you know, maybe once in your life you see something like this happen. What do you do? Um, there's one guy on Instagram who says if the dog has a choke collar, you just pick them up by the leash or the collar and just choke them out until they pass out. Smart. And if they don't have that, like that dog has a harness. You got to go thumb in the butt and press down. And then they go, what? And they kind of like let the person go. Yeah. I've heard that butt thing. I've heard the butt thing work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, practice at home. Just get (laughs) get a few reps on your dog first so you know you can do it. And, uh, yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, This person makes mac getty, like macaroni spaghetti, I guess. And um, there's just something interesting here I want to show everybody. So they're grounding the beef. Nothing that looks crazy. Normal. I did this recently. Everything's fine. A little sauce. A little sauce. Lots of seasoning. And now, wait a sec. What? That was a lot of salt. What is that? That better not be salt. <clears throat> I've never eaten something that was seasoned like that. That is so much salt. This person is pro- probably has bloat issues. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she does. Wow. We we called it. That's where that's where all the water weight's going. Yeah. That's what all the salt's doing. It's you? rushing there. <laughs> oh my god. That was the whole bit for yeah. that. Um all right. Jump scare. Sorry. Yeah. Jump scare. Didn't mean to jump scare you guys. Last piece of this part of cringe, page one of cringe, the candid photos guy. Yeah. And really quick before we play this, we'll preface this. Basically, there's like a thing where girls take these fake candid photos. And it's like their friends taking photos of them and they pretend to laugh. They pretend to be looking at something. They pretend to be reacting. 
And it's just so corny and fake to me. And then I know why the Native Americans say, oh, you take a photo, it steals your soul. Yeah. That one's like, that's 100% soul-selling contract You're shit. faking. Yeah, you're faking. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Ashley just said something so funny. You know how she jokes. Yeah. When was the last time a girl said something funny? And then it's like, oh, good thing the camera person's here. Click, yeah. click, 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 click. Yeah. Got that joke on camera. That never happens. I, I've seen groomsmen do bits. The groomsmen, they do bits. Yeah. The bridesmaids, they just go, ha, ha, fake. They fake. Guys All laugh. Right. So here it is. Like, what do I do? <laughs> like, is this angle good? <laughs> Oh my god, a bird! <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so that's the bit. It was very funny by this guy. I totally agree. It's like all, it's a like Kamala Harris thing. She does it too, where she's like constantly like, cackling and open mouth. Yeah. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look yeah. natural. Nobody believes you. Yeah, it's a thing that all the single girls at their friend's wedding do uh, look like they're not sad on Instagram. Yeah. One more point for the incels. One more point for the incels is right. All right, moving on. Um, this guy got hate crimed by a little kid. Hello. Hi, Wednesday. Yes. Can you play? No. Can you see your nails? I want to play this game, boy. I just got. Oh, What the fuck? I've got hate crime by little kids. He's got hate crime by a little kid. But what's the crime? You yeah. just got talked to by a little kid, right? Kind of roasted, cooked. And he asked you a question. Do you have your nails painted? Yeah, and he called you a gay boy. So Open and shut case, no crime. Yeah. Is it A, the kid committed a hate crime, or B, you have painted nails and you're a gay boy? <laughs> I think I've have, made my call. <laughs> yeah, I think you have painted nails and you're a gay boy. Yeah. Which is even a crazy assumption. There was a stat that came out the other day. 40% of Brown University students identify as LGBTQ blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, and I think the actual number was 38%, but they kind of rounded up to 40. Gay Demic, four in 10 students. They're homosexual or gender confused. Have fun trying to get a girlfriend in college. <laughs> Actually, it's easy for the straights, right? It should be. The straights are cleaning up. I if guess. you're a traditional masculine male, everyone will pretend you're the problem and whatever, but girls will still like you. Yeah. yeah. Even the girls who are specifically hating of straight white men, they'll still be coming. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then for that guy, too, I think he's probably in the UK or something. The blue nailed guy. The blue nailed guy. It's like, why don't you go talk to a Somali person? You get a real hate crime. Yeah. <laughs> go talk to a fresh migrant. But someone you know, who made the journey across the uh, British, uh, what is it, the English Channel. Yeah, and he's got dumped off. Yeah. He'll 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 show you a real hate crime button. <laughs> um, and it's basically the whole thing of this is like denying reality. Like you have to deny reality now to people's faces, and if you don't, you're hateful. This next one, this guy, um, you can just play it the ten out of ten. Do you have a girlfriend? No. Let's go find you one then. I'm straight. I like men. Oh, let's go get you a boyfriend. Let's go. Mm. Pause real quick. So he says, I'm straight. I like men, meaning he's a girl and he's straight and he likes men. Like, that's how it's no, being set up. No, I don't up. need a boyfriend. Come on. Not in Venice. It's a Cody from Aris Effect. Let's go. What about my boy right there? Rate him. Rate. Rate him. Let's go one to ten. I'm not really into dudes, man. If you are a dude, I don't know. I'm not a dude. You're wrong. Then you're, you're a 10. Everyone's a 10. We're all, we're all beautiful here. Oh. You're all wrong, guys. You should look at me first again, okay? So another denying of reality. And it's like, oh, you're trans and I'm on camera? You're a 10. Yeah, you're a 10. I'd love to keep my job. You're a 10. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to keep my 80K a year mid-level job. Yeah. You're a 10. Uh, I'm a middle manager at a Fortune 500. I am staying. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the treatment. I do not resign. <laughs> right? yeah. Like you turn to the camera. That's what you literally have to do. And yeah. This is like the treatment Kim Jong-un gets. Exactly. It's like, oh, how'd you do in golf today? It's like, oh, I shot 18. Hole in ones. <laughs> wow, 18? You're a 10. That is like, that's the best score you could get. <laughs> Bountiful harvest this year, comrade. Yeah, you know, exactly. just like. <laughs> but, you know, trans people are oppressed. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, here's a message from Planned Parenthood on their Twitter the other day. Planned Parenthood said, don't yuck someone else's yum. Everyone deserves the freedom to explore their own sexuality free of shame and stigma. Stop kink shaming. Yeah, stop kink shaming. So mo a lot of companies, institutions are trying to get the twinks to be naked in, you know, fucking the street, basically. In public, yeah, in public. And it's because they're oppressed. 
Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Um, all right, moving on. The you know, if I was one of those guys who like, oh, I had sex in my car when I was 19 with my girlfriend, and now I'm on a sex offender list, to see all this shit happening now, the guys with the dicks out riding their bikes, yeah. it'd be like, what happened? Yeah. I have that on my record right now. And now it's just a true free for all. Yeah. So it went out the door, but if it's like marijuana conviction, it is it's like, like marijuana. It, it, marijuana is legal everywhere now, and uh, I'm serving time for having an yeah. ounce in the 1988. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, moving on. The uterus transplant for the abortion. This guy wants to get a uterus so he can get an abortion. Yeah. Let's see what they're fantasizing about, right? Yeah. The first trans woman to have a successful uterus transplant, ovaries and eggs included, and I want to be the first trans woman to have an abortion. That's it, right? That's pretty much it. Forget it. We we see what they're fantasizing about, yeah. right? And they always there's always a thing of like, oh, like the right wing will say, you'll never be a woman because you can't get pregnant. And it's like, that's just one of the reasons you'll never be a woman. But then they take that and go like, if I get pregnant, then I'm a woman. Yeah. So that they just do it and run with it. And it's just like, you know, the horrors behind human comprehension. And personally, to me, it's like uh, there's no follow up statement. It's just you'll never be a woman. Yeah. There's no because afterwards. Yeah. It's just no, I'm comfortable with. My, I don't even actually have to prove yeah. it. You'll never be a woman because you don't have long hair. Yeah. You, <laughs> like, you have to disprove it. It's not. You know what I mean? That's um, a good point. And so, again, this is just like something I'm noticing with the trans community, too, is constant fantasy. They're they're daydreamers. They're all in their own head and like spinning around constantly. So it's like, I'm going to get the full uterus transplant and then an abortion just because I know that'll trigger everybody. And it's like, oh, no, OK, that's fine. 300 yeah. I'm the I'm the surgeon. Yeah. So uh, that's easy money because it doesn't even have to be delivered alive. Yeah. So 300 K, we can make your delusion a reality. And it only cost me 100. So I pocket two. That's so true. Um, and then another thing I, I want to say, we were talking about this off screen a little bit. Um, there's one of the accounts on Twitter that I was looking at about uh, trans like delusions and stuff. Truny Tunes, I think it was. And they said that, uh, or they posted a video of a trans, uh, a guy pretending to be a girl doing like these TikTok bits where it's like him acting out all the parts. And it's like, this is how it's like to go into a bar when women are there. And he's like, hey, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, I'm acting out the other side. Oh, yeah? Bet you can't do this. And it's like you're imagining a conversation between yourself and women that yeah. where you're normal because you wrote it. You wrote yeah. the bit. It's just like such a LARP. They really love daydreaming and making up scenarios. It's Real part schizo shit. Yeah. Real so. schizo shit. It's a very, as we always say, it's a very slippery slope. Remember back in the day, abortion needs to be you know safe, legal, and rare. Yeah. And now a man's putting a uterus in himself to conceive a child through gay sex so he could kill the unborn baby via abortion. Yep. So that's pretty. That's all. Oh, that's one step away from the bottom of the slope. Yeah. We that's should hit a dead cat bounce soon. We should yeah. go back up after that. But there is one more iteration that would make it the true end of the slope if like a uh, someone under eighteen was involved. Mm. You know? Yeah. But like we're pretty much at the very end of a very slippery slope. Yeah. And I was thinking too. Excited it, to see where we'll go. To yeah. <laughs> for the show, you know, this great for the show. It gives us content. I know. Um, and I was also it's thinking. It's very easy to yeah. compile this shit. So. Yeah. And we're never going to run out, especially going into elections and stuff. Um, <laughs> if the devil's goal is to destroy God's creation, he's hitting home runs with the trans people. Oh, yeah. It's just the easiest home run ever. Dinger after dinger. Brown, 40%. Boom. Yeah. Exactly. That's a four. Gone. That's a 400 footer. It's like you cut your balls off. It's like there's your, there goes your lineage. Yep. You get a uterus transplant. I think he said from a healthy trans person. So you're cutting like the lineage from one woman out, giving it to a guy who's not going to use it and then kill it, you know? So it's yeah. like the devil's very happy. Indiana Jones switch. Yeah. It's dead anyway. Um, all right, moving on. We are into Urban Decay. We have a very thought-out Urban Decay. First clip of Urban Decay um, is kind of like a global thing. Obviously, every country, every Western country is dealing with the influx of illegals. Yeah. Refugees, illegal immigrants, stuff like that. Sp specifically, asylum-seeking refugees. That's yeah. what everybody's using. That's the old trick to get in now, right? Exactly. We covered that last week. 
Uh, there's a National Pulse article that came out. Illegal migrant facility inhumane due to unreliable Wi-Fi and no hair salons. There's no hair salon. That is not right. That's a human rights violation. So yeah, a migrant detention center has been branded inhumane by Britain's Independent Monitoring Board, the IMB, a prison watchdog group, because it lacks a hair salon, a cultural kitchen, high-speed Wi-Fi, and iPads to help illegal migrants make friends. There's not enough iPads. You don't have the iPads, England. Um, and this is a female-only detention center um, that is for people who are like specifically already going to be deported, Right. Um, and so there's a couple damning things from this article that we just want to point out. Um, the center is run by a private firm on behalf of the government at a cost of $100,000 per year for each illegal migrant in residence. 100000 a year? Per person. Per person. You know how much that is? It's like if you stop a boat of 50 migrants, you save fifty million, uh, $5 million. Yeah. You know, a penny saved is a penny earned. It's like yeah. every single dollar you spend on stopping the migrants from getting here is saving you 100k a year per person. You know, and that yeah. that varies by country of course, but just insane numbers here and shows yeah. the importance of like a border wall, the importance of actually taking the laws seriously, getting them out quick. Penny um, save penny earned, save dollar no illegals. Yeah. Um <laughs> exactly. There you go. Um, and then thankfully, somebody at least uh, who was running this said, this is a modern, comfortable facility for housing individuals who should not be in this country and are awaiting de deportation. The strength of the mobile signal and the quality of Internet are not high priorities. So Good. at least it, someone there is a, a, a adult male. Yeah. Someone's in charge and didn't have their brain rotted like so. Or like told what to do by women and homosexuals. All right. And, and that's the thing, too. It's like, who pays for this watchdog group? There's a watchdog group making sure the people who broke into your country illegally and are soon to be deported are treated with respect and dignity. Why don't you help us get everyone out? Yeah. What, what are you watchdogging? Yeah, their role is to facilitate the government spending more money dealing with these idiots. Uh, you know? Yeah. That's like a problem everyone's facing. We have problems like, you know, we have problems like that here. Here's what downtown L.A. looks like. It doesn't play in the background here. Yep. It's just a zombie zone, a Mad Max town. I used to call it Mad Max uh, when we would go out at night in downtown L.A. walking around. We would ride the city bikes. like the you know. It was the... kind of more like Thriller, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like dun-dun. <laughs> they all have a little rhythm to them, dun-dun. <laughs> yeah. And then they start coming out in the street and they combine. We used to, uh, me and Elijah used to rent uh, bikes from like the city bike type of thing. Mm -hmm. And at night we would ride through downtown when there weren't many cars and it would just be like a weird post-apocalypse war zone. Yeah. I what loved it. Were, what were they called in LA, those bikes? Because uh, it's city bikes in New York. City bikes it's in New York. Divi bikes in Chicago. It was something stupid. Yeah. I don't remember stuff like that. Sometimes I forget how old I am. <laughs> okay. So there it's you like, go. I don't remember the city bikes from LA. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. Um, all right, and then here's what uh, shopping at 7-Eleven in Portland looks like. Yeah, this is highly related to the L.A. zombie land zone. Please look at camera for entry. And if you stand on the shoes and look into the spheroid until you get the green light, that'll open the door for you. Oh, stand on the shoes? Isn't that crazy? And uh, it's not going to – we don't have to tell you, but the first video, the L.A. zombies, and that video are directly related. Yeah. America's inability to stop the zombies, the literal criminal zombie street rats, is now forcing you to use facial recognition camera. Look up to get your uh, coffee and cigarettes at 9 p.m. Exactly. So thank a local liberal politician for uh, ruining it. Yeah, thank your local DA. So basically it's like you have no arrests, so crime goes up. So then you need to take measures for security, and then you have security cameras with biometric data like this, and everyone everything's locked up. So then basically your rights decrease and then there's still crime because no one gets arrested when all they have to do is just enforce the laws that are already on the books. It's not like you have to make a new law and get something passed and get bipartisan agreement. The laws are already there. Yeah. Stealing's illegal. Stuff's a felony. But everything is going out the window. No one wants to listen to that. No one wants to enforce that. So like we're in this like weird purgatory where it's like we have the laws, but we're not enforcing them. But what do we need? New laws? It's like, no, here's a security state overreach on all your rights to because all that crime you're complaining about. Yeah. And the weird part is the goal is to kind of like wait you out 
so that like everybody's standards get lower and lower. And then it's just like, yeah, this is just how it is. You know, the a young generation is like, yeah, this it's been this way for my whole life. Like I'm, I'm 18 now. Yeah. And so just wait them out. They just kind of steal. And then they try to make you forget how good it used to be. Yeah. You know? They wait you out and then they wait for the old generations to die who could like tell you how it used to be. And then all you know is how it is. Yeah, and shut then- up, old man. Yeah. It didn't used to be like that. You're lying. Boom. Give me your yeah. wallet. <laughs> Some minority robs you. <laughs> All right. Moving on. The ring cameras are bad now. Yeah, this uh, kind of goes hand in hand with that. But uh, I think this was Wired Magazine doing a product review. And they said, why we don't recommend ring cameras. And they write it like a like a coward, you know, like a leftist. Uh, most product testing is simple. If a router is better with more... Uh, features, then we give it this, but then this is like their, we have to press time out and we're not just doing the product. We're taking it on the whole like, yeah. for its well, social It's impact. not a technical review. It's a social review. Yeah. So while you set up a ring camera, you're auto automatically enrolled in the neighbor's service. Um, neighbors, which is also a standalone app shows you activity feed from all nearby ring camera owners with posts about found dogs, stolen hoses, a safety report that shows how many calls, violent or nonviolent, were made in the past week. Um, and it also lets you easily share your ring camera data with police departments, right? Uh, so you can share the videos captured with your ring doorbells and outdoor security cameras to law enforcement. It's a unique feature to ring. Even Nextdoor, the, another neighborhood app, removed its forward to police feature in 2020. Mm. Oh, the George Floyd pressure got to him there. <laughs> yeah. uh, which allowed Nextdoor users to forward their safety posts, blah, blah, blah. But so Wired's team, they're going on to writing about this. And like, I just want to read a few lines because, you know, their case, their case is, oh, it could be mean to black people. So it shouldn't exist. You should have no safety. Um, And so it says the company has been clear. It's what customers want. Sharing, having these Mm -hmm. apps, uh, even though there's no evidence that more video surveillance footage keeps communities safer. There's no evidence of this. Like, who is this author just throwing out that insane claim, right? Probably some girl who went to Wesleyan. There's no evidence. It's like, uh, I solved a crime last week. There's extremely tangible. Here he is on camera breaking my window. Yeah. Here he is arrested. We matched up the faces. He (laughs) got convicted. Yeah. You're in jail. So um, the article is really long winded, but it says uh, neighbors increases the possibility of racial profiling. It makes it easier for both private citizens and law enforcement agencies to target certain groups for suspicion of crime based on skin color, ethnicity, religion, or country of origin. So they're just whining. One, it has no proof, but it's also for sure going to increase racism or something. Yeah, They're firing from the hip on both ends. So it'll increase racial suspicions when a black person does a crime, but doesn't the black person's crime... Increase racial suspicions. Increase racial suspicions. Yeah. Not it, the ring cam. It's they, like they're like they're trying to do a chicken or the egg, but then they're adding in you watching it. Yeah. You know, chicken or the egg, which came first? Well, if you're watching it and sharing it, then you just polluted the experiment. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of a So a, it makes no sense to me. And then they also said like homeowners are gonna become a vigilantes if this happens. But it's like yeah, leave it to the police. Let them not arrest anybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't need you getting involved. And then, so I just want to read one last sentence from this article. It's like neighbors can contact, uh, like law enforcement can re- create requests for assistance and neighbors can contact camera owners directly for footage. So you can kind of like reach out and a cop can be like, can I have this? Can I have that? Your neighbor can be like, can I have this? Um, and th- the sentence in this article, we believe this feature should not exist. Mm. They're just like trying to shame and bully a nice suburban community from sharing and reporting things and keeping their community safe. Yeah. And it's like, these are the same people that probably think that no one should have a gun either. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Um, but yeah, so the article is a really word salad, nothing that there's no proof having camera stops crimes. And there's also no proof that it makes people racist, but it could. So exactly the current state of journalism, right? Yeah. Don't get a ring cam because when it catches black people doing crimes on your house, it might make people suspicious of black people. What about the people doing the crime? Doesn't that do it? No. All right, moving on. The girl who says stinky whites. Yeah, let's see. Let's see who. This is actually not on a ring camera. She filmed it herself. (laughs) Okay. This isn't like full shade towards you. I just see a lot of comments like this, and this was the most recent one, so I'm just responding to this one. 
when white people say shit like this, it isn't the serve they think it is. Like, you're a part of the problem. Fix your people. Pause bro. it real quick. So sh- the thing she's reacting to is it says, what does it say on top? It says, I don't, I don't blame you for not trusting white people. I'm white and I don't even trust other white people. Okay. Now that's good context. Like when white people are like, I'm white and white people do suck. Yeah. You're probably a part of those said white people. So do something about it. The fuck? Also, I hate when white people try to validate me. Like, they're literally like, I'm white, but I agree. Bro, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't need validation from white people. Like, that's the last thing I need in my life. Like, I feel like white people always try, but they miss. Like, and I feel bad for y'all. Not that bad, though, because your ancestors suck and you're stinky and evil. But bad enough where I want to call you out and tell you not to leave comments like this because it's crusty. Anyways, for all the bleach demons willing to learn, I see you. You're not as bad as the rest. And then earlier in the thing, she says, fix your people. It's like, are we disproportionately killing people and looting? Are we taking more in taxes than we're paying? Are we bad at building the entire West? You know? Fix your people. Are we doing a ton of crimes? Are we? Do we have brain camera articles about us and how we shouldn't be profiled based on our skin color because yeah. of all the disproportionate crime done in communities oh fix your people and then they call us stinky stinky sure about that <laughs> <laughs> sure about that i that love girl- it man i love it it's really just so off base that yeah. it's it's so good and and she churns up this white person who like is the only type of person who will hear her out yeah the, the white white race trader saboteur Who's like, mm, fuck white people. And then she goes, fuck you. Yeah. And then there's us who's like, you're an idiot. You know, you obviously yeah. don't make points. Uh, you ever heard of per capita? Yeah. You ever exactly. heard of the per capita crime stats, lady? Because uh, you guys are stealing and killing. And the bleach demons live in very safe and quiet neighborhoods. Bleach yeah. demons. We built the whole thing. <laughs> we built the whole West. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, you know, she's not completely wrong. There are white people doing crimes, too. Of course, just like black people. Are, are we going to show her first with her boyfriend? Oh, yeah. Really quick. And so she got humiliated, revealed. She's got a white boyfriend. White boyfriend. That's her white boyfriend. There she is. Uh, she probably also believes in the obesity standards for racist, too. Yeah. And that's why she could be. Pagan. That's why she could eat whatever. That's why her legs so thick. But yeah, there he is. White boy. Bleach demon. She's got a little bleach demon of her own. There's a very rare Venn diagram when we agree with Tariq Nasheed. Mm-hmm. And this is one of them. Yeah. Where like he goes, ah, oh, shaking my head. And uh, we agree, Tariq. Yep. So we, you know, we're not perfect. White people are not perfect. We do do crimes too. Yeah. So we have actually have a video of white people doing crimes. It's two old, two boomers. Yeah. Two, two old guys. Two boomers at a golf store. Uh oh. And then homie, two putters, takes two putters. What are those? The white hot? Those are John, the Johnny Cameron white hots? <laughs> Johnny Cameron. Is that what they are? No, I don't know. Scotty Cameron. Scotty <laughs> yeah, Cameron. Scotty. Scotty Cameron white hot. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. And these old guys wearing like button downs and sweaters. And then he starts putting it in. And his buddy's like helping him. Like, let's go. Like, this was their plan. And then they fake. He's doing a good job faking the other guy. And then he kind of walks with a limp, which is like reasonable for an old man. Have a weird straight leg, and they kind of rush out of there. So yeah, we're not perfect. Heist. Yeah, we're not perfect. Um, what do you what do you think of that? Uh, inflation, man. Yeah, <laughs> inflation's making people do desperate <laughs> shit. Oh. They, they both are probably buddies, and they both want a new putter. And, and they're they just said, like oh, two hundred eighty five bucks. I can't. Yeah, I can't. That, pay that guy just he's like always in the back. We can go in and out. They wouldn't even notice. Hilarious. Well, as long as it's not over a thousand dollars, you can take whatever you want. Yeah, play by the rules that they set for you. Right. No need to arrest these people. Yeah. And then speaking of what you said before about how we agree with Tariq Nasheed sometimes, uh-huh. this next clip is one that we agree with Tariq Nasheed. People, uh, the black people in this video, the are, black women, the black women in this video are twerking at a what kind of site is it? It's a slave masters uh, historical site. So it was where they had either it was either the slave quarters or the slave holders mansion. But here's the solution. Got to twerk on it. Got to twerk on it, dude. So they twerk on it. So us and Tariq Nasheed both found this disgusting. 
Uh, so we're agreeing with Tariq, I guess. Um, and then I, I kind of call it, uh, it's becoming this all encompassing thing, like where a hammer is always looking for a nail. Yeah. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah, exactly. And when you're a black woman, you, you, Everything can get torqued. Everything on. can get torqued on is basically <laughs> what we're saying. So here's another one where uh, these women got an opportunity to meet a spider monkey or maybe a macaw. So it's like, yeah. So it's like if you're a black woman and you could twerk on uh, at a funeral, you could twerk, twerk at brunch at a brunch at a kids party. There's always something that can get torqued on. Twerk on the cop car during the riots. So for this one, yeah, twerk on an ambulance. We saw a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So for this one, these people met uh, like a spider monkey. Great which opportunity. Was a huge twerk opportunity. <laughs> They seized it. They go, oh, there's a monkey here. Torque. <laughs> and it's like that monkey understands this. Yeah. He's I like, I know he what's it. going on. Everyone's kind of shaking their thing. He's like, yeah, I got that too. I got that too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when when everything's, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And uh, torquing, the torquing will continue, guys. Exactly. There was a woman's tweet, which I thought was really funny. And it says, I don't support all women. Some of you bitches are very dumb. <laughs> I think the slave twerkers would be exhibit A. Yeah. All right, moving on. We are into second page of Urban Decay. No big deal. The Discrimination Against Black People Survey. Yeah, so uh, this was how much do, the question for this survey was how much discrimination is there in the U.S. today against blacks? In 2012, 33 percent of African-Americans says, said there was a great deal of discrimination against blacks. In 2020, that number jumped up to 64.5 percent. So it's a great deal of discrimination. 64.5 basically doubled yeah. in eight years. Must have gotten really bad. Yeah. Um, and then keep in mind, we'll show some graphs quickly in the background. This is the graph of approval of black and white marriage over the last few years. Looks like a hockey stick. Yeah. Straight um, up. And, and and during that same time, it went way up. So yeah. while they're experiencing a lot of discrimination, they said. Exactly. So while they're just experiencing a lot of discrimination, everyone else seems to be more and more fine with black people. And then um, the ter- this is a, a graph of the media's use of the term racist or racism over the last few years, over the last 50 years. And that graph just – that's the real hockey stick. Yeah. That's more of a hockey stick. It that's what you want to up. invest in. So you can thank BLM for this. Um, they have like the same I'm, I'm a victim brain poison that the LGBTs have. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mostly made up. And uh, doesn't fit reality, but you know George Floyd got killed that one time. Yeah. So on drugs, and he ate all the fentanyl. And fentanyl. Yeah. He had the banana. He was jumping up and down on the security camera footage. Everybody saw that, right? Yeah. Or no? Did they not? Did they not probably show not. it? Not. They probably didn't show that. Um. And then this is another interesting one. You want to take this? Yeah. So this is a graph, and it basically says among blacks, those who have attended college are more likely to say they're experiencing racial discrimination. Yeah. So, so the more educated you are, the more racial discrimination you experience, but you're getting a college education. Which you likely got into that college a little easier, as we've seen with the damning statistics. Yeah. Um, so it's, I guess, a learned behavior. They really hammer it in at college that you're discriminated against, you're discriminated against, you're discriminated against. And then Isn't they that come interesting? Out, they come out of college and they go, boop, boop, boop. So like a black person who Let's doesn't go to numbers. college would say, no, nah, I'm not that discriminated. I'm not, it's not that bad for me. Yeah, I went to college. I'm it was fine. great. You know? You know? So it's like for them, it's fine. But then if you go to college, that's when you really learn how discriminated everyone is against you. Yeah. That's uh, when you finally find out. And then we have examples of this attitude. Um, the black surgeon tweet. Today I walked into a new hospital with hair fresh out of a protective style. Afro sitting high and wide on top of my head. I checked in with my name and stated my purpose for being there and was sent to patient registration. I'm not having surgery. I am the surgeon. It's like, okay. No okay. one knew that. You're the surgeon? Okay. Room two. Room I eight. didn't mean to send you to room one. Sorry. Room two. Yeah. Get prepped. Cool. And it's like, that's it, right? I don't, no one's like racist. And blah, blah, blah. You could never be the surgeon. <laughs> you have big Afro hair. <laughs> like, is that what they think is happening? Yeah, that's uh, what they think is really going on. And I'm sure she got into medical school a lot looser than a couple of white guys did. That's so, very true. I would yeah. not that would not be wanting to have surgery from that person. Not be my first choice on a surgeon. Complaining on Twitter too. They probably would be like anti-white and be like I'm going to I'm going to cut his artery a little worse. Yeah, these sutures. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> you got enough anesthesia. 
Yeah. Um, all right, then the black guy fishing. Here's another good one. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Very nice. You guys residents here? Are we bothering anyone? Don't I touch just it. have to hide. Don't touch it. Sorry? Alright, well, um, this lake is presently for residents only. So, thank you for filming. I'm not giving you permission to film, so. She's not. Okay, picture of your license plates and forward it on. Hey, so y'all hear what I go through, right? This the third person. This the third person. I'm in my own neighborhood, and a white person came and bothered me while I'm fishing. He's acting like a girl. Like a twink. You're like a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a crybaby snitch filming. Hey, do you guys live here? This is this lake's for residents only. Oh, yeah, I do. I live on Cherry Street. Oh, you do? Oh, I live on Maple. I didn't realize. I haven't met you yet. I'm Carol. Hey, Carol, I'm Bob. Oh, yeah, all good. Enjoy. You guys catching anything? Oh, nothing yet. Just got here. Okay. Have a good day. Just checking to make sure. Just want to keep the neighborhood safe. That's how, mu that's how much it takes. That's how it goes. Instead, they just don't answer the question and go, this is the third person. They don't answer the question and then like that hesitance of like, well, do you live here? And like, ah, here we go. And it's like, do you, well, do you live here? It's like this person's like, y'all, look at this bitch trying to police her community and keep it safer. Women <laughs> like this are what keep communities like in line. You yeah. know what I mean? Having standards, not letting people just do bullshit. Like, you know, uh, w she would do this to a bunch of different people. Too. Yeah. Kids, punk kids fucking around. The yeah. Mexican guys who go and eat the catfish and keep them. Yeah. Keep them all. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So all you have to do, like, they just assume the absolute worst because everyone's convinced they're so oppressed. So they assume the absolute worst. Oh, this it's like a 50 year old white woman. Is she here to mess you up? Is she here to? Is she gonna your beat shit? you up, dude? Like this hey, guy's such guys a pussy. Here is for residents only. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do. I'm Michael. Like, that's what's your it. name? Like, she was so pleasant and like trying to just make sure that. And you know, maybe they do live there. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't want to be your neighbor though if that's how you act. Yeah. Oh, everyone's trying to get me. Oh, they're racist. Why'd you move into the probably ninety percent white neighborhood? Yeah. If it's so racist. Exactly. It's it's like a trade-off. They think racism, uh, oh, safety, but it's all racist against me. It's like, yeah, exactly. nah, man, just live with us. All right, moving on. We're out of urban decay, and we are into uplifting gold. Okay. Is that exciting? Yeah. All right, we're going to go kind of fast because we're, you know, we're a little behind. We're trying to keep these episodes to like an hour and 10 max. So, you know. All right, moving on. Uplifting gold. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We are into uplifting gold. Our first clip of uplifting gold is a Denny's criminal tries to get away and then doesn't. It's actually an urban decay uplifting gold, but. Uh, it's the brackish in between. Exactly. Folded outside this Denny's restaurant on Hawthorne. The gunman seen running across the parking lot to the victim's car where police say he robbed the four people inside. One woman jumps out, running into the restaurant for help. You see panicked patrons inside calling 911. While out in the parking lot, the victims take matters into their own hands. The driver in the victim's vehicle hits the gas, dragging the gunman back, almost knocking him down. The suspect regains his stride, trying to get to the getaway car, which passes him by. Getaway car the victim bails. then taking direct aim, running him down, the gun still in his hand. Running away from the scene with a gun in his hand when the victims chased him in their car, and when they struck him, it launched his body up in the air, and somewhere in that process, uh, the gun in his hand fired, resulting in him getting a bullet in the head. Inside the restaurant. Cop, cop likes that. The cop was laughing, dude. <laughs> um, the guy got hit by the car and shot himself in the head. He's dead after trying to rob four people. It's called That's What You Get. And remember, uh, maybe it was Tuesday, maybe the week before. We need more bodies on the pavement. Some people need to not make it, you know? That's and true. this guy is the lucky recipient of that one. So it's it's lovely to see a criminal get some quick comeuppance. I hope no one, no DA starts going after the people in the car or something. <laughs> Imagine. No. It's not impossible. California. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely not impossible. But uh, if it was a white guy, there would be hate in his heart and he would be charged. But I think they were all black. All right. Moving on. Uh, the squirrel gets away. This is uplifting. Some monster is trying to catch a squirrel with a net in the house. A baby squirrel. Here, I'm trying to save you. And luckily, this thing gets yeah. away. Well, <laughs> he goes well, and that thing's just gone, gone forever. Yeah, Goodbye. he's done. Your house is gonna start smelling in like four days. 
Um, all right. Guy caught a rod with a fish on it. This is good fishing summer Here stuff. There we go. There's Ben right there. He's got one. So he reels it in, and it has a. He caught another rod. It popped out, Ben. How? Oh, he got the. Oh, there's no way. Just don't, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. That's a good catch. What? <laughs> so he perfectly caught like the yeah, eye of one of the things. Fishing rod? There's no way. <laughs> And there's still a fish on it. Yeah, Ben. That is a beauty. <laughs> my okay. And you can reel it all the way that as you eventually land the fish. It's a big fish. That's a striper, big. right? A no one's going to believe that. Just like that. Just like that. Nice big striped bass. <laughs> That's good action. Yeah, rare. All right, moving on. The Roman candle fight. This is fun for the summer. You can have Roman candle fights with each other. It looks fun because it hits hard. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's fun. You that's uplifting around, gold, and that's people. why it's in uplifting gold. Yep, that's and fun. The kid with uh, the kid who's mad he's not Mexican. You're African. You're black. Okay. I want to be Mexican. Why do you want to be Mexican? Huh? Because I eat quesadillas. Because you eat quesadillas. Yeah. That's why you want to be. That's why you want to be Mexican. So you, so you don't want to be from Africa anymore? No. Why not? Because I want to be Mexican. Where do you get this from? Why do you? What make you want to be Mexican? You can't just be Mexican just because you eat quesadillas. It's because Nagasi is Mexican. Nagasi is Ethiopian too. He's half Mexican, but he's Ethiopian too. Well, I'm not Mexican too. That's enough. He's just funny. He doesn't understand the yeah. world and wants to be Mexican. Yeah. He eats keys ideas. There you go. When I was a baby, I used to want to be a Chinese man. Yeah. When I was five. I felt like that was just a bit the whole time, though. You don't think that's true? No, I think you knew what you were doing, though. Oh, no. Like, I think you were aware. I see the problem was I misunderstood Chinese man mm-hmm. for delivery man. Oh, okay. Okay. So every delivery guy for the Chinese was a Chinese man. Mm-hmm. And we would order it once a week. So if the, a delivery guy would come to the house once a week, and it would be like, that's who I want to be. The Chinese I man. Be the Chinese man. Gotcha. Uh, and I was like five. And I told a lady on an elevator once when she asked, oh, what do you want to be when you get older? And I said, I want to be a Chinese man. And then she goes, he's very honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last piece of uplifting gold. Guy with no arms cornhole. Let's see what he's doing. Sinking cornhole shots better than a guy with all the stuff. No arms, no legs. A couple out to the right. Can Dayton Weber take advantage here? Back two is going to be good. He's up. Isn't that good? That's enough. Everyone gets it. Hey, no complaining, everybody. If you got your arms and legs, you have nothing to complain about. And if you don't have your arms and legs, you don't have anything to complain about either. Because you could be cornhole. You could be a champ. Yeah. You got to make the best of whatever you got. Um, there's a meatloaf song about that. You don't have a lot, but it's all that you got, and you can turn it into more than it seems. Just give it a shot. Ah, fantasize every movement and imagine every inch of your dreams. Inch of your dreams. No one said it had to be. Had, had to, to be, be real. real. You gotta be something you can reach out and feel. Uh, it, it ain't, ain't right, right. It ain't, ain't fair. fair. Da, da, da. All right. (laughs) That's the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, As always, we are going to end the episode with a shout out to an American business, an America first company that shares our values and supports the show. This week, it's Chinese Donut Boy. Ding, ding, ding. The Instagram account with almost like 70,000 followers. My literal brother, Chinese Donut Boy. He started the account like a year ago or maybe two years ago, Uh, maybe a year and change ago. And, you know, it did good, got to like 15K, it was, you know, grinding, grinding. And then he just started going hard, posting more, really funny stuff. And then the account got into the algorithm and just juiced. And now he has over seven, almost 70,000 followers. He's literally my brother, friend of the show, watches every episode, posts every episode, loves us. We love him back. Make sure you guys follow him. He's linked in the description. Comment on his stuff. You can write the Rob Ceviche. He won't oh, care. Oh, yeah. Hit him with some Rob shit. <laughs> you can really hit him with some Rob shit. Light him up. Make sure you guys follow him. He's great. And he's my brother. 
in. He's a friend of the show. Love that guy. Chinese Donut Boy. Link in the description. Another Fluckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fluckustalks.com for bonus land out now. If you're watching to this point and the show's over and you want an extra 30 minutes, that's out right now. Fluckustalks.com is the website. First month is free. So make sure you go sign up. We have a lot of funny things to talk about in bonus land. We're talking about Disney. Uh, we're talking about Anthony Bourdain. Uh, some shows we watch climate change, all kinds of good, good stuff. Very funny stuff. Great community there. Make sure you guys join us. Don't buy any merch. Fleckusmerch.com is offline for another week or so. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next Hello one. Hello everyone. No fizzy drink for me today. When I was addicted a few years ago, I used to have fizzy drinks. Any excuse, any occasion. But one special occasion when I used to have fizzy drink all the time.